Dr. Cohen, to start, could you please discuss the background and the impetus behind this study? Certainly. Uh, you know, urethral stricture disease is, is a relatively common entity that negatively impacts the urinary quality of life and overall health for, for many patients. And direct vision internal urethrotomy or urethrodilation are both well-established, relatively equivalent endoscopic methods that have been used for the initial treatment of urethral stricture disease for many years. However, um, we know that failure rates for these methods are quite high, and there's even worse success rates with each uh, subsequent endoscopic procedure. Now, in contrast, urethroplasty is a definitive surgical treatment option with recurrence fee rates of around 85% among experts. So, as a result of all this data, the American Urological Association uh, produced guidelines on urethral stricture disease management that recommends patients are offered urethroplasty for recurrent stricture disease as opposed to getting these repeated endoscopic managements. And recent work has suggested an increasing use of urethroplasty across the United States, but really very little is known about the prevalence of repeated endoscopic management. And so our team was most interested in, in finding out what the prevalence of, of that repeated endoscopic management may be. And could you uh, describe some of the findings of the research? Yeah, certainly. So using the AUA quality registry, we were able to look at data from over uh, 5 million patients who were cared for at over 1,300 uh, provider, uh, providers across the United States from about 2014 to 2018. And um, we found that about 20,000 people underwent endoscopic procedures for urethrostricture disease over that time period. Uh, and 31% uh, of those patients had a repeat endoscopic procedure during the study period. Now, there were over, there were over 1,000 patients that received three or more endoscopic procedures and hundreds of patients that had five to 12 endoscopic procedures. And the frequency of these really vary greatly by practice. And additionally, we identified some factors that may be implicated, such as older patients, patients with bladder cancer, or even older practitioners. These were all factors that were associated with repeated endoscopic management. And were any of these findings uh, surprising to you and your co-authors? You know, the, the great variability in each practice in terms of the level of repeated endoscopic management was surprising. Uh, you know, prior research uh, has shown that there are increasing use of urethroplasty. For example, uh, uh, Dr. Liu et al. Um, in the decade of 2003 to 2013 looked at practicing urologists uh, case logs during board certification and, and found that newer, younger urologists did significantly more urethroplasty than those that were recertifying. Um, Likewise, the TURNS group has noted a decrease in the number of pre-urethroplasty endoscopic treatments from 2006 to 2017. So with our contemporary data, we were somewhat surprised with the degree uh, of repeated endoscopic management and the variability therein. Uh, does your group plan to conduct any follow-up research uh, on this topic? This study gives us a small glimpse into the, the truly enormous research potential of the AUA quality registry. Um, so this is an automated data capture system, and it allows participating urologic practices in the United States to meet all government requirements for quality reporting. And it also allows practices to benchmark their quality performance scores against their peers, which really can be crucial in developing local quality improvement activities. Now we used the aggregate data from this registry and it, it was really instrumental in, in enabling us to do this project. And this project really serves as a test case for future high quality research that can be enabled by this resource. Um, the more urologists and their patients 
are represented in the registry, really the higher quality and more representative this research can become. And hopefully in the future, more granular data will be able to be captured. And so this really has the potential to become one of the premier urology specific research databases. And you know, we are currently in the early stages of using the database to investigate uh, practice patterns uh, surrounding male urinary stress incontinence treatments, uh, which, is, which be, would be similar in the approach that we took to studying urethral stricture disease in this project. Is there anything else that uh, you uh, want practicing urologists to take away from the study and its findings? This datum demonstrates that certain practices are more likely to be offering repeated endoscopic treatments than others. And this suggests uh, some guideline discordancy, uh, and it really presents an opportunity for quality improvement. So, you know, I think urologists should really take pause if they're considering a repeat endoscopic procedure for stricture disease in a patient. Really make sure that that matches the needs and, and wants of the patient. You know, the guidelines advise against repeated endoscopic treatment because of the known low efficacy. And so I think that urethroplasty should be discussed with these patients. And if it's not offered, you know, uh, locally, then uh, patients can be referred to a partner or to a, a regional center of excellence so that patients do have the opportunity to get urethroplasty if it, if it is appropriate for their care.